Welcome to the Physics Tips for Cambridge Students YouTube channel. Today we are going to look at an IGCC topic that is uh, the thermocouple thermometer. Without much further ado, uh, let's get started. Now the thermocouple thermometer is made up of two metals, dissimilar metals, that is metals that are not the same. In this case, as you can see from the diagram there, we this thermocouple has been made from copper and iron so we have got two copper wires one going to the positive the other one going to the negative of the digital multimeter and then we have an iron wire that then closes the gap that forms then a cold junction and a hot junction so these are the two junctions that are made in the process now the cold junction is always placed in ice while the hot junction is the probe. Okay, so let's use this as the probe. Now uh, the greater the temperature difference between the cold junction and the hot junction, the larger the EMF that's going to be produced on the digital voltmeter over there. So at first when we have both junctions in ice we must register a zero millivolt uh, display on the digital voltmeter and then as this difference increases you start having an increase also in the millivolt display so we can use so which means this uh, display is proportional to the change in the temperatures that's uh, given there so the cold junction is always kept in ice but then the hot junction is uh, uh, used as a probe. Now the advantages of using a thermocouple thermometer is that it can measure rapidly varying temperatures. So it, because of the very low heat capacity of the junctions, you find that it is possible for you to measure very, very uh, rapidly changing temperatures. Also, it is a large temperature range that is uh, about uh, minus 200 degrees Celsius to 500, 1500 degrees Celsius. So it can measure very high temperatures and very low temperatures. It can also measure temperature at a point. So which means that if you have got a liquid that is flowing in a pipe, place a thermo thermocouple in the, the, that is the probe, the hot junction it will register the temperature of the liquid as it passes every second. So it will give you a readings for every flow uh, of the liquid that is passing through. Right, we're going to look at a practical situation whereby you are calibrating a thermocouple. So in calibrating thermocouple, you need a digital voltmeter. You need the two wires copper in this case we are now using constantine which is a kind of alloy and then you have you, you need two beakers again or two containers where you can place your ice uh, and as well as your hot water so at first you have uh, the cold junction in ice and then you have the hot junction in very hot water say at 90 degrees celsius and then you start adding ice thereby decreasing or just add cold water and then you, you by you start decreasing the the temperature of the hot water now on the digital display remember it measures the the the, the voltmeter reading is proportional to the temperature difference between the hot junction and the cold junction so it means there's going to be a decrease in the digital voltmeter display So you keep on adding the cold water and so that you maintain you start recording the temperatures as they uh, decrease say about by 10 degrees Celsius and also record the voltage. Make sure that you stay at the water so that you get a uniform temperature and continue reducing the temperature of the warm water in 10 degrees Celsius steps 
each time recording the, temp the, the voltage until you reach a final temperature of about 5 to 10 degrees Celsius. So here suppose that uh, we are starting off with a uh, temperature of uh, let's just say 80 degrees rather than the 90 that we talked about earlier on. So suppose we have 80 degrees so which means you go down to 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20. Okay. Right. Then um, suppose also that, uh, let me just review what's on the table. Now suppose also the, the theta naught, that is the theta measured at zero degrees Celsius, that is uh, in ice, suppose it is at uh, zero, it's purely pure water, zero degrees Celsius. So which means theta minus zero there will be 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, and 20. So that's that. If your theta naught is 4 degrees Celsius, you, you subtract, there you'll be getting 76, 66, and so forth, and so on. And then here, you record the voltmeter readings, right? Now, when you've done that, you are going to plot a graph. So on the y-axis, you are going to have um, voltage. And then on the x-axis, so this is measured in millivolts, on the x-axis, you're going to have theta minus theta naught, which is the temperature difference that is in degrees Celsius again. So you're going to get a straight line graph that passes through the origin. Okay. So then, uh, once you've done this, you can now use this uh, graph as a calibration curve. This is to help you find the unknown. Suppose uh, the difference in temperature is so much. So here, remember, we can have our, our 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and so forth and so on. And then the readings of the voltage corresponding to that will be shown there to give you these points that helped you to find the line of uh, of best fit now suppose at an unknown voltage you hear what you have uh, this temperature difference so then it helps you then find the temperature of the object that you've placed so in this case suppose you put it in tap you replace the water with tap water and then keep the other junction the cold junction is always placed in ice and then you observe what goes on now in the other junction. So the, remember the other junction is now tap water. So it means you're going to get a voltage displayed there. So that's the voltage that you see there. And then you go horizontally until you meet the, gra the graph. You go down there. The graph will give you a temperature difference, theta minus theta naught. In this case, our theta naught was 0 degrees Celsius. So which means this is corresponding also to the uh, temperature of the water. So that's how you use your graph is the calibration curve. So that's how you obtain values of temperature using a thermocouple. So the graph is used to find the temperature of the tap water. So any unknown temperature can be uh, found using the graph that you have made that uh, the calibration graph. Right, so I hope this uh, video uh, made sense. If you have any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to ask in the comment section. And please do not forget to subscribe to the channel and also hit the notification bell so that you get notified of my future videos. Signing out.